What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Simon Tech once again, and today we're going to go over exchanging your altcoins that you've been mining over into Bitcoin and then extracting it to your bank account. This is a follow up to the biggest misconception about nice hash that we posted earlier this week, and so you can check that out up there in the corner. Without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back. So I have tried to record this video maybe three times now and screwed up. So unfortunately, my accounts don't really have a lot of coins in them to be able to go ahead and go through the full process. But we'll be able to give you guys an example, at least, and kind of show you how it works. We're going to be taking a look at three exchanges. We're going to be taking a look at Bitrix. Trade Satoshi and Cryptopia. The reason you're gonna have to mess around with multiple exchanges is because not all coins are going to be on every exchange. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of the business right now. And we'll kind of go over some of the positives and negatives of each of these exchanges. So let's get into it. Starting things off, we have Bitrix. And before you do anything, make sure you go to your settings and click two-factor authentication. Download the Google Authenticator, which I'll put a link in the description to below for either iPhone or Android, and go ahead and enable two-factor authentication. Once you've done that, we'll go back to wallets. And here's two things. If you're going to be mining and holding for an extended period of time, always use a local wallet if possible. And if you're going to be getting the revenue out right away, which I know some of you like daily revenue, then you might want to consider just mining to the exchange and then pulling it out once a day. To do that though, all you really have to do is click the plus button next to the coin and then copy the hex address. In most cases, it will say generate a new address. Of course, I already have one generated for music coin, but let's see, we can probably do it with Doge. Yeah, so you see here, we we would just click the new address and then it generates it. We copy that and then place that into our mining script to mine directly to the exchange. Now, once we've done that, the other thing we can do is pull the music coin out to another music coin wallet, like a local wallet, by clicking the little negative button. Here, we would just put our address to our local wallet that we want to send to, and then the amount of music that we want to send, which we could just say all by clicking the up button and then clicking withdraw. Now that that's taken care of, what we really need to do is transfer it into Bitcoin so that we can send it to our Coinbase wallet and get our money out of it. So to do that, we would just need to go to the exchange by clicking the music. It'll take us directly there and we'll have our buy and sell music coin. When you're buying and selling, always scroll down and look at the bids and the asks. This will determine if you want to do the last bid or ask. Last will do the last sell that happened, so I usually stick with that. And then I review down here to make sure I'm not selling at a bad time. For example, right now it was earlier selling at like 143, 145, so on, and now we're able to sell at 155, so I'm pretty comfortable with that. We'll click max to add all of our coin, music coins there, and then we will just go ahead and click sell music coin. There is an option here to put a limit or a conditional based on greater than or equal to BTC value, and then the exchange will hold it until that BTC value pops up in like an ask and then it'll sell it to the person that's bidding that much for it. So that's a way you can protect yourself if you need to set it and forget it for a little bit, then you can do it that way. For now, we're just gonna go the basic sell music coin path and we are not going to be able to show you guys fully because the minimum order is larger than what we currently have in here. Once you've done that though, you'll just head back to your wallets and you will open up your Bitcoin wallet by typing BTC in the search or by clicking hide zero balances. And then you will come and withdraw your Bitcoin by clicking the negative button. And you'll see that we can put our address here. We're gonna grab our address from our Coinbase account and you can hopefully already have a Coinbase account. I recommend GDAX if you have a possibility of using it. It's owned by Coinbase, but if you're able to connect your bank account directly to GDAX, you only have a 0.25% fee here. We'll go over that maybe in another video but you would just click withdraw and then click bank account. Since it is tied to Coinbase, you can withdraw through Coinbase, but keep in mind the Coinbase fees will then apply. 
But for today, we're just looking at Coinbase. You'll click the receive button on your Bitcoin wallet, click show address, copy the wallet address, and then come back and paste it into the address slot and then click up on the BTC and click withdraw. Next, we're gonna talk about Cryptopia. It also supplies a multi-factor authentication, but a weaker one, it's just a PIN. So you enter a PIN code and then you are able to have that as a secondary to your password. This is not near as effective as Bittrex or even Trade Satoshi, which uses a Google, which uses a Google authentication with your Android or iOS device, and that's much safer. So be, be cognizant of that and don't keep a lot of coins in Cryptopia at this point at all. Get them in, get them out, and that's how I feel about it. But there are some coins that are only here, and it has a really nice UI. So we're going to want to go into our balances and take a look at our balances that we currently have. We have some Sumo coin. If we want to get the mining address for our Sumo coin, we will click the deposit Sumo and then copy this payment ID and paste that into our miner to mine directly to the exchange. Alrighty, so to sell our Sumo coin, we're just gonna go ahead and click into the exchange and then search for Sumo and open it up. This looks very similar to Bitrix, of course, and you'll see that we have 0.1 Sumo. Now, the only thing that sucks about this is that the auto population is not currently working, so we do have to run the old school copy and paste. And then once we have done that, we have the price that we can just click and that will do the last price. Make sure you scroll down and take a look at the sales that have been happening and their pricing. You see that we're at 6429 and uh, it's dropped quite a bit today. So it's not a very good time to sell necessarily, but that's just something to take a look at and maybe wait for. To complete the transaction, there's two steps. You're gonna click total and then you're gonna click sell. Now, once again, our minimum trade is too high, so we're gonna have to wait on that. Once you've completed it, you'll go back to your balances and look for your Bitcoin. Now you see that I'm still waiting on a transfer of Bitcoin. Like I said, I've done this video too many times at this point, but to extract it, you'll click the withdraw BTC and then you will go back to your Coinbase account, click copy on the wallet address, come back to Cryptopia and it'll go here in the Bitcoin address, type in your pin and type in the amount. You can just click the, the amount in the balance area and it'll populate it with the, the full amount and then click next. So for all of these, what's gonna happen after you click next is you're gonna get an email to the email you signed up to the exchange with to confirm the transaction. So once that happens, you'll just pretty much open up your email and click the confirm button and then it will process the transaction to the very end. Next we have Trade Satoshi and this works similar to both of the other exchanges. The two-factor authentication is quite a bit better than either Bitrix or Cryptopia. If you go to your account settings and click security, you'll see that you have a login two-factor, a withdraw two-factor, and a transfer two-factor. And to create the two-factor, you click create two-factor and then you would click Google Authenticator is what I use personally, because if you're using an email, you're, it's probably gonna get caught. PIN, of course, is what we saw on Cryptopia. It's much weaker as well. And the Google Authenticator will go to your phone, so the potential hacker would have to have access to your phone as well as access to your password, so it's the best way to go. You'll open the Google Authenticator and scan this QR code, and it will add it in, and you click in the six-digit code, and click verify code and then add two factor and you are off to the races. Once we've done that, we're gonna go back over to our balances. I'm gonna hide zero balances here and see that we have seven, 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 nine Bitcoin Zs here. And we are gonna want to trade it out for a Bitcoin. So we will just search for Bitcoin Z in our balances. All right, so once you're on here to sell BTCZ, just click the total and you will see that we have this amount now automatically populated. And then we wanna figure out the rate. Of course, if we come down here, we'll see the rates that it's currently selling at. Here's some buy orders, some sell orders, and it looks like we're just gonna go with like the three, five. Go ahead and review it. Like I said before, scroll down, see if it's going up or down and, and kind of what the trend is there. 
So now we can go ahead and we got to re-click the total to correct our amount that we're selling. And then we have the all, everything added in and here's the fees so we will talk about fees all of these exchanges have a fee both on the exchange itself and then when you withdraw so you need to calculate all of those into your your bottom end before you're kind of calculating your total profit we'll click sell and then the order will go through. At this point, we can go back to our balances, click hide zero balances, and we can see that we have some Bitcoin available. To withdraw the Bitcoin, we're just gonna click the withdraw button, and then once again, we will go over to our Coinbase account, copy the code and our wallet address, come back to trade Satoshi, paste it into the address, and then we'll click the balance and click create. The minimum here is 0.003, like I said, third time on this video, I've done this so many times that I've pretty much run myself out of possibilities to show you guys, but I fully all the way through and I apologize for that. So here's a Bitcoin Z, I did wanna mention, you would just click create address and it pops up with an address similar to Cryptopia and Bittrex do for you to mine directly to. So now once you've done all that, you're gonna to need to withdraw it to your bank account, or in this case, the example I'm using is gonna just be PayPal. So you go to buy, sell, essentially tab, you select your wallet, the Bitcoin wallet you have created that you just moved everything to, and then you click the sell max and sell Bitcoin instantly, and it will deposit it into your PayPal address. Keep in mind that the PayPal address has an additional fee of 2.5%, so that's gonna add on as well to that bottom end. So these are all things you wanna keep in mind, keep in mind and yes, like I said, coming over to GDAX is gonna drastically drop that. You're just gonna have to do some verification with your bank accounts and so on and so forth, and make sure that you have a bank that allows you to do cryptocurrencies. So I hope that was helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know if you have any other tips. There are a lot of nuances here, and we're not going into full-on analyzation of fees, etc. And I realize that right now there's just only so much time and I wanted to get you guys a basic idea and understanding of how all of this works. If I was successful, leave a like and I will see you next Tuesday.